Welcome to IDT Talks. I'm Anastasia Lavrina, and today we are going to speak about the position of the United States towards the South Caucasus. My guest now is Stefan Blank, who is a senior fellow in the Foreign Policy Research Institute, United States of America. Hello and welcome to our program. And the first question I would like to ask you is about uh, your opinion on the situation in the South Caucasus between Armenia and Azerbaijan. How do you think two sides are far from signing the peace deal? I, I would not describe the situation as being peaceful or stable yet, but I do think that we are seeing a stabilization trend and a trend towards peace, even though it is surrounded by many difficulties. Um, Azerbaijan and Armenia are negotiating directly uh, under the auspices of uh, either the EU or the US, uh, Turkey's involved also, Russia as well. Um, it's important not to get all these tracks confused, but the fact of the matter is I think that the European Union track is probably the most promising. And the fact that Pashinyan clearly wants to make peace suggests to me that although it will be difficult, that we are making progress towards a new and legitimate status quo based on the outcome of the war two years ago. Now, there are many factors that could disturb this. There are people in Armenia who simply are unable to reconcile themselves. Uh, Azerbaijan needs to behave with somewhat greater magnanimity to allay the fears of the Armenians in the territories. There is the threat from Iran, which now has flared up again. And there's always the possibility of Russia making trouble. Well, but Azerbaijan is proving its goodwill by action while Armenia is trying to make this statement to undermine the peace process uh, in the region. And the last months, it's quite difficult to call the situation as a peaceful. So but I would say by no means do we have a peaceful situation, but that we have a situation which progress towards stabilization and peace uh, is discernible. Yes, but what we hear from the Prime Minister of Armenia, Nikol Pashinyan, at the meetings, at the official meetings which has taken place or took place before in Brussels or in Prague, usually differ with what we see after during his speech for the internal audience in Armenia. Okay, so uh, I think that he is when he says things like that, he's playing to the gallery. But the fact of the matter is, I think he understands perfectly well that there is no alternative for Armenia but peace. The problem is his domestic politics. And this is you know, a well-known problem. It's not just, we've, not, we've seen this in other countries as well, not just Armenia. And uh, we, we saw it in Azerbaijan when Armenia was holding on to Nagorno-Karabakh too. Uh, so every government has to take account of its domestic politics. But I do think that our, the Armenian government, by and large, realizes that they have no other better alternative. Another very important question. How do you see the U.S. strategy towards the South Caucasus after the U.S. midterm elections for the House of Representatives, which took place in November 2022? I don't think these elections were about foreign affairs and certainly not, a, uh, they're not going to, I don't think they're going to have an effect on the caucuses because in the United States, the caucuses is not that big an issue. The sad fact is the United States does not really have a strategy for the caucuses. If you look at the national security strategy document, which came out a few weeks ago, it doesn't even mention the region or central Asia. So, uh, we're not thinking in strategic terms about the Caucasus or Central Asia, which is very unfortunate. Uh, I, I and several other colleagues 
have been arguing against that kind of thinking for years to no avail. And the uh, interest of the State Department in mediating between Armenia and Azerbaijan is, is to be welcomed, but the congressional elections had no relevance to this issue. So from your point of view, there is um, no United States foreign policy strategy toward the South Caucasus. So uh, how do they form their foreign policy toward the South Caucasus countries, as for example, towards Azerbaijan? I'm not sure they know that they are really building a coherent foreign policy towards uh, the Caucasus. I mean, there is more interest in Azerbaijan now because of the energy issue. I think that's obvious to every observer. But I, I don't see any kind of systematic thinking in government, and that includes Congress, about our position either in Central Asia or in the Caucasus. So it's a mystery to me how, how they build foreign policy in this administration. And this administration is by no means unique. Uh, Trump Trump's administration didn't get very far in the Caucasus either. Yes, but what we see last month, it seemed that the United States of America is quite interested to see the peaceful development in the South Caucasus, especially when it comes to the situation between Baku and Yerevan. I think they want to keep the peace there because they now realize that another war could be an explosion and they want to keep Russia and Iran out. And third, they want to be able to bring uh, Azerbaijan's energy to Europe. Well, it would be interested in working with the energy producers, that's for sure, but that's not a strategy. I mean, individual acts of policy may be intelligent or not, but that doesn't make them a strategy. They're just individual actions. And that's the problem. Because if you don't have a strategy, you don't know what you're trying to achieve, and you have no framework for action. And without that, your actions are not coordinated, they're random, and they're reactive. There's no positive view of trying to shape an, uh, an overall outcome in the Caucasus that would be a benefit to the United States, as well as to the individual governments and peoples of the region. And that's what I'm concerned about. Well, and my final question to you, if there is no U.S. foreign policy strategy towards the South Caucasus and towards particularly Azerbaijan, should we expect any reaction from Washington if the situation between Iran and Azerbaijan, for example, is going to change or there is any kind of provocative action from the side of the Iranian government towards Azerbaijan? Should we expect any reaction from Washington? It might react diplomatically, but that would be the limit. Now, the problem with Iran is uh, that Iranian relations with Azerbaijan and, cons and tensions over the border and tensions over the uh, Azeri population of Iran and uh, uh, Iran's efforts to subvert the government in Baku have gone on for a long time. This is not a new issue. If if it does not reach the level of Iran attacking Azerbaijan, it can be managed without foreign intervention, diplomatic or otherwise. But if Iran and Azerbaijan actually come to blows, this will open up an international crisis. So I think, again, the United States may have an interest in preventing an explosion between uh, Baku and Tehran, but Again, in the absence of a coherent strategy and uh, a desire to become more heavily involved in the Caucasus, I don't think we're going to change our posture fundamentally. Well, Mr. Blank, thank you so much for joining the program today. It was a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you, Alexander. Just to remind you, watched IDD Talks. I'm Anastasia Lavrina. Stay with us and see you in the next edition.